A lot of Game 7 moments led to Celtics championships, including the 2008 title for our friend Paul Pierce, who is back uh, after kissing babies, and he rejoins us here. Look, you've been, you've been a part of some pretty triumphant Game 7 moments. How did you approach those games? Well, I always wanted to play with urgency. I never really focused on what I was going to do offensively. I was like, I always judged my game on how well I played defensively, how much I hustled. Did I make effort plays? Because that's what it's going to come down to at the end. You know, scoring, I was a natural scorer, so. But you win games in the trenches. You got to go out there and get the big rebounds. You, you got to, can't take a possession off. You got to challenge every shot. You got to think about all the little things that can help your team win, because those little things add up to big things. And, and that's what they're going to need tonight. Chauncey, you better say something because y'all are over here snickering. Oh, you are such a motivational speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I concentrated on yeah, the game. Hey, hey. here. Can't y'all feel the excitement in here? It's loud as yeah, game seven. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought, in the Boston I'm, I'm, Garden. Yeah, it is. I'm basically, I'm, 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 I'm about to air you out about that defensive <laughs> comment that you made. I only think about defense first. Well, I mean, if you don't cut it out, I understand you at home right now. <laughs> but you graded yourself on how many buckets you could get in the, right. in, the, in the fourth quarter in game seven. <laughs> Cut it out. Hey, it's tough. You see, the loose, you're not here. you see the loose ball I dove for was a key possession. That's hustle yeah. plays. You need hustle plays to win. Thompson, you're a champion. You know this. I do know that, and I do know that that was probably the first time I seen you on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Um, you guys want to share any Game 7? You already told us that you just treated it like any other game, which seems like a, a thing that would be easier said than done, but I believe you for some reason. Yeah, I treated it like any other game, these I really did. And, and here's one thing I always try to keep in mind. You, you know at certain times in your career that this is a moment. This is a big, this is a big moment. B -b 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 and the thing is, what I tried to always do was know that Guess what? I'm gonna remember this game for the rest of my life. Mm. And no matter win or lose, I'm gonna remember it for the rest of my life. So I might as well try to make it a great one, right? Yep. Period. Because it's, you're gonna remember it forever. I'm sitting here telling you the one that I really remember is the one that I lost. And by the way, it was for a championship, so it's probably natural that I'm still heartbroken by it. But, you know. Game sevens are, are it's a special thing to be able to experience. If it'll help you, buddy, as a Detroit native, it you felt me, me didn't you? You it felt hurt me. me too. I appreciate that. How about Therapy. this? I'm, I'm not as fortunate as my, my, my co-workers, my finals MVPs, my brothers to get a chance to play against LeBron and play against all of these great players. But one thing I did do, I played against Mike and Scotty, and they were pretty good at basketball. And my role on that team was to literally play defense, move the ball, make an open shot when it Time, came time for a big bucket, give it to Reggie. When it came time to get physical, let the Davis boys handle it. Hmm. And that's how it went from a team that didn't make the playoffs the previous year to end up playing against Mike and Scotty in game seven of the conference Ooh, finals. That's we awesome. was up 15 in the first half. We should have handled that. We were like the Rockets last night. Yeah, well, okay, that's not good. Um, all right, so that's you guys. LeBron has a bunch of experience in game sevens. He's actually five and two all time. He's won five straight. As far as tonight, we'll find out what his approach is. You gotta make shots, you gotta get defensive stops. You got the 50 50 balls, um, the grit. You know, you got first man to the floor. Um, you know, just, um, that's just what's wanted um, the most, obviously. Um, that comes with it as well. But, um, you know, his mind is you know, able to be the sharpest as well. So, we'll see what happens. It's worth noting, um, this is LeBron's 100th game this season, including the playoffs. That's insane. How should he approach it? LeBron James is on his big L. He's so ahead of his time that his parents haven't met yet. And what do I mean by that? Everything that we're thinking about doing and planning on doing, LeBron James has actually accomplished on the floor and off the floor. And the thing that he's become over these last few seasons that I really appreciate other than a, a leader, and the triple doubles this year and playing 82 games, you're going to love this Mr. Big Shot. He is literally clutch. And he went yeah. for me from being the, un uh, the immovable object to now he's the unstoppable force. LeBron James has decided to score. 
I'm looking down at these box scores. LeBron got 35, 40, 45. Before you were hoping that he passed the ball to somebody else late, and then you would question them if they miss. But now he understands that I can take over and be a triple-double waiting to happen. Paul, what do you think? Do you agree with Jalen? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, LeBron is going to be aggressive. There's no one, there's no one player that can stop him one-on-one. -on -one. Let's just face it. The key for the Celtics is to shut down the other guys. LeBron, you got to expect him to be special because that's what he's been in game sevens. I mean, this guy is playing better than ever. I'm just so happy that I don't have to play against him tonight because he's a lot better than he was when I played him in 2008 and 2010 in the playoffs. This guy, I mean, he's, it's like he's peaking at an older age and uh, you got to expect him to be, be aggressive. You got to expect LeBron's best. The Celtics has to have to expect hard. If you want to win in this league, if you want to win in the game seven, expect hard. If you can put that in your mind, physically and mentally, you can push through. And so I expect a great game here tonight. I think the Celtics are going to win. They have a great atmosphere here. I think they're the better team. Although you do have the unmovable force in LeBron, I just think the team overcomes that tonight. Can't you feel oh. the excitement you hear? Yeah, we, we can feel it. I know you've got a big time seat to get to. Go get comfy. Thank you. All right, you guys. See you on the road. Right, boy. Enjoy the game, fam. <laughs> Does he come out? Or does he come out scoring? What, what do you expect? You know, I think he has to do some of the things that he talked about. He has to be the first guy to the floor. Yep. He dives on loose balls early in games. But here's one thing he has to do. He has to empower and inspire these guys by his effort early. Not only offensively getting to the basket, creating opportunities, but defensively as well. Taking tough matchups. Have one of those great block shots. Mm -hmm. When they see the intensity that he's going to be playing with, now they say, okay, we, we got to come with him. And, and, one, and one of the things that helps when you're playing at home when you're the Celtics, usually the team that plays hard gets the benefit of the whistle. Plus you have the crowd behind you. That's why it's important LeBron to come out aggressive so that he now can be the best player in the series that also gets the benefit of the calls. Yes.